Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and a good way to celebrate is to learn more about the towering faith of this courageous saint. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. It's hard to believe, but Boston has decided to cancel its famous St. Patrick's Day parade. The decision was made, said the Boston's mayor, out of an abundance of caution to contain the coronavirus and protect the city's residents. Now, if you're among the thousands of disappointed would-be paraders and partiers, why not use this St. Patrick's Day to learn about Patrick, not the man of legend who supposedly drove the snakes out of Ireland, but about the man with an indomitable faith in Jesus Christ. In 2006, Chuck Colson told St. Patrick's story in a breakpoint commentary. Here's a portion of it. Patrick was born in Roman Britain to a middle class family about 390 AD. When Patrick was a teenager, marauding Irish raiders attacked his home. Patrick was captured, taken to Ireland, and sold to an Irish king who put him to work as a shepherd. In his excellent book, How the Irish Saved Civilization, Thomas Cahill describes the life Patrick lived. Cahill writes, the work of such slave shepherds was bitterly isolated, months at a time spent alone in the hills. Patrick had been raised in a Christian home, but he didn't really believe in God. But now, hungry, lonely, frightened, and bitterly cold, Patrick began seeking out a relationship with his Heavenly Father. As he wrote in his confessions, I would pray constantly during the daylight hours, and the love of God surrounded me more and more. Six years after his capture, God spoke to Patrick in a dream, saying, Your hungers are rewarded. You are going home. Look, your ship is ready. What a startling command! If he obeyed, Patrick would become a fugitive slave, constantly in danger of capture and punishment. But he did obey, and God protected him. The young slave walked nearly 200 miles to the Irish coast, and there he boarded a waiting ship and traveled back to Britain and his family. But as you might expect, Patrick was a different person now, and the restless young man could not settle back into his old life. Eventually, Patrick recognized that God was calling him to enter a monastery. In time, he was ordained as a priest, then as a bishop. Finally, 30 years after God had led Patrick away from Ireland, he called him back to the Emerald Isle as a missionary. The Irish of the 5th century were a pagan, violent, and barbaric people. Human sacrifice was commonplace. Patrick understood the danger and wrote, I am ready to be murdered, betrayed, enslaved, whatever may come my way. Cahill notes that Patrick's love for the Irish shines through his writings. He worried constantly for his people, and not just for their spiritual, but for their physical welfare. Through Patrick, God converted thousands. Cale writes, only this former slave had the right instincts to impart to the Irish a new story, one that made sense of all their old stories and brought them a peace they had never known before. Because of Patrick, a warrior people lay down the swords of battle, flung away the knives of sacrifice, and cast away the chains of slavery. As it is with many Christian holidays, St. Patrick's Day has lost much of its original meaning. Instead of settling for parades and cardboard leprechauns and the wearing of the green, we ought to recover our Christian heritage, celebrate the great evangelist, and teach our kids about this Christian hero. That was Chuck Colson from back in 2006. And on today's Breakpoint podcast, Shane Morris interviews one of Chuck's closest friends and advisors and our former Breakpoint colleague, T.M. Moore, who's also the author of Celtic Flame, The Burden of St. Patrick. And tomorrow and Wednesday only, Fathom Events is showing a brand new movie starring John Reese davis called I Am Patrick. Come to Breakpoint.org to see where it's playing in your area. That's Breakpoint.org. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm John Stone Street.